Hey, moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Duh! <laughs> look, look, look at me! I'm the woo water boy, dude! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house and as always i want to say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as you ladies you know that this literally does not work seriously without you guys we wouldn't be over 130,000 subscribers so i appreciate each and every single one of you guys and we also have our original channel back we're going to start putting more content and things on there, but it's just great to go back and look and see that the Cowboys have been doing the exact same things, the same problems over and over and over again, expecting a different result. In the meantime, of course, in the meantime, of course, the Cowboys have been making more and more money. So maybe the Cowboys have it right and we got it wrong. I, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to think that because um, they haven't been winning. In the five years that that channel was gone, I mean, they've been winning 12 games, but not in the playoffs where it counts, but they are worth so much more money. So we maybe have some of the secret sauce. We've got a very, very tough weekend in the NFC East for everybody. You've got the commanders that are going against the surprisingly 0-2 Cincinnati Bengals where they're eight and a, uh, eight point underdogs, okay? Um, that's still, even though the Bengals are 0-2, uh, the Bengals are still a good team that have a great quarterback in Joe Burrow. Although I will say Joe Burrow seems to be kind of going downhill. The injuries on him seem to be catching up with him as far as his play on the field. I'm sure I will get Jason out there who will tell me that um, I'm an idiot and he's been commenting about our uh, little screen thing here and they're calling it the light bright thing and it looks like garbage and throw it out the window if you don't like it bro you know 49er fan i won't lose any sleep over not having you watch bro this is dallas cowboys nfc east nobody invited you to the party if you don't like my shit you don't like what i'm serving at my restaurant there's other places that you can go eat jason and yes your guys do get open a lot more than what my guys do Okay, as far as separation goes. Just just saying. You've got the New York Giants. The Giants. God, I forgot who the Giants are playing. It doesn't matter. The Giants are just challenged anyway because they stink. Um, the Giants, they're just a bad team. Oh, they play the Cleveland Browns. That's it. They play the Cleveland Browns. They'll be the underdog, of course. They probably will be the underdog on pretty much every game they play this year. They are in the battle to get the number one pick to get a quarterback to replace Danny Dimes, who literally stole money. Then we got the Eagles going against the New Orleans Saints. They joked us about getting our lunch handed to us before they ended up getting beat by Kirk Cousins on Monday night. And they are now being hit by the injury bug. The year that they went to the Super Bowl and came this close to winning, the thing that happened for them was they stayed healthy for the most part the whole year. That was key. One of the things that's interesting to me is one of the things I said that you worry about with Saquon, because Saquon is an incredible back when he's healthy. He is. He's a difference maker. You can look at the Eagles and say, without Saquon those first two games, that team is not winning or having a chance to win either of those. He has been the guy for him with A.J. Brown being gone. But the thing you have to worry about Saquon is he usually starts out the season really, really good. If he makes it through the season, by the end of the season, he's kind of worn out and not the same guy. Usually his first couple of games are his big games. The last couple of them are not as good. And I said that not as a, a hater, to Eagle fans, I said, this is the worry that you have with Saquon. And what I heard from Eagle fans was, oh, we're not going to use him like that. Oh, no, he's you know, he's going to be used sporadically. You know, he's going to get like 10, 15 touches a game so he stays fresh. And that's not the case. Now, we'll see how it works out for the Eagles going to the whole season. But you can see 
he is now the workhorse for that offense while they try and get together and without A.J. Brown. But now they got another injury here. Let, let, let's go to Philly, Philly 500 here, and let me get it from the horse's mouth and, or, or horse's ass. That if they play up to their talent, even with no A.J. Brown, I believe they still could win. But it's going to take a lot from this team and one of the things that Broke i'm really media. worried about as of right now going into this game is not only that aj brown is out because you know he's going to be out but cj garner johnson may not play okay he apparently hurt his foot in a walkthrough a walkthrough on thursday did not practice on friday today and uh we, we don't know if he's going to play or not. Uh, Jeff McLean caught up with him, and this is what he said. Pound Eagles safety, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, declined to talk or address his foot injury with the reporters on Friday. He didn't practice the last two days, but said this. Quote, see you Sunday, he said, while packing his bag in, in his locker stall. So, see you Sunday. Hopefully that means... Uh, C.J. Garner Johnson's going to face his old team. And apparently every time he's gone up against New Orleans or his team has gone up against New Orleans, he hasn't been available uh, because he's been injured. Injuries are a problem with C.J. Garner Johnson. You know, I thought with the Eagles, with, you know, his first time with the Eagles, he had a freak injury. I thought he had a bit of a freak injury last year with Detroit. But now he's got these little injuries creeping up. Hopefully they'll get taken care of. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not betting this Eagles game. <laughs> He's I'm, not put, staying away I'm betting from on it. the Cowboys. The Eagles I'm betting on the Cowboys. something before I, 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 I take this game. But there is a couple Eagles props I like. Um, shout out to BetUS. Uh, because you can I'm definitely take the over. Uh, Saquon Barkley <laughs> over under 74 and a half yards. Uh, I like that. I, I think Saquon Barkley has to have a big game for the Eagles. I think the Eagles are going to run them a lot and use them a lot this week. I'm taking the over with that. And then Devontae Smith over 73 mm -hmm. and a half yards. Uh, okay. Devontae Smith is due for a 100-yard game. He's had he's had two. I, I, I would take the points over on that game, to be quite honest with you, because I don't think that they're going to be able to stop New Orleans. New Orleans may get the over by themselves, so we'll see where that goes. Then, of course, we have our Dallas Cowboys. Our Dallas Cowboys against the Baltimore Ravens. Again, much like Cincinnati being 0-2, um, you have to look at the Baltimore Ravens being desperate in a team that looks and says, we got to get a win. But this isn't your um, daddy's or Ray Lewis defense on Baltimore. And if you look at the numbers with Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry had like 86 yards, but I think 82 of it was in the second half. Um, they were able to ground and pound and stuff and get him going, but they couldn't get him going early. The thing with this matchup is I think you need to score and score often in this game because the Cowboys definitely, definitely want to make them one dimensional. So we'll see where that goes. Now, the secret sauce may be this, and this is something that maybe gives you a little more hope with the Cowboys and things, that they're still figuring things out. I'm not ready to hit the panic button on this game. This game, to me, reminds me of how we were in week three last year with the Cardinals. The Cardinals, we ended up losing digs uh, the week before, uh, during the week of that game, and we didn't show up. And it was just a bad game. They ran rough shot over us. The defense looked terrible. Although you can still say that the run stopping has been the Cowboys Achilles heel for a long time. But we just looked inept in that game. After that game, after the San Francisco game, when we had the bye week, it was when the offense finally started clicking. Now, I'm going to say, C.D. Lamb, remember was only there two weeks before the season started. He didn't have the off season. He's, he's been pretty good so far, but he's still getting in shape and getting ready to play. Understand, um, Brandon Cooks missed some time in training camp with injuries and things, and he still, you know, it took him a while to get started last year. 
And Jalen Tolbert is just getting into the groove of now playing more with this offense. I'm not so worried about the receiving. Missing Jake Ferguson last week was big because he is Dak Prescott's second favorite target right there and one of the weapons that makes a difference on this team. I think we still have plenty of time to get it together. Will this be an easy match? Hell no. Vegas literally has this as a one-point underdog at home, which is saying a lot to a team that's 0-2. So it's going to be tough. And the Cowboys are, of course, everybody is picking against them, which makes me feel better. It seems like when everybody picks the Cowboys in the game, unless it's against the Giants, they struggle. It's not good. So those are the things that make me feel good. Now, Ed Werder was talking with Dak Prescott and had tweeted this yesterday that immediately following the loss of the Saints and again with the media on Thursday, Dak Prescott spoke about the importance of bringing his mobility to the Cowboys' offense, escaping the pocket, extending plays, and running the football. When the Cowboys are, the Cowboys are 26 and 9 when Dak has five or more rushes. And this is where you have to look at and say, the Cowboys have to figure out different ways to manufacture yards in the running game. Thus far, you have to look at it and say the Cowboys are, I think, 25th or 27th in running the football. We're not good. We're not good thus far. Some of that is we have a new offensive line. you got two new players that are starting. They're still getting into the group, and this is still really like preseason. Some of it is we don't have elite running backs anymore. Zeke Elliott is still a good running back, but he's not Zeke Elliott of 2016, 2018, 19, and all that. He is an older back. He does not have the burst that he once had. And so you have to go ahead and be able to spread the field out. And these are things that they can do, but it's going to take time to get there. And one of those things is if you have a quarterback who does and is able to move the pocket it keeps teams from being able to, you know, pin the ears back and go right after the quarterback. It means that you're going to end up getting putting the cornerback on an island. Is he going to stick with the receiver? Is he going to come up with the quarterback? It will give you some different advantages there. And these are things that can help the team in general. Do you want your quarterback to run and risk him getting injured and hurt and stuff like that? No, you don't want to make this a regular thing. But at times you have to do this to try and get yourself an advantage. And as far as the defense goes, the defense was ass-ass last week. They just literally ran into a buzzsaw, and once shit started going downhill, it just got bad. Looking back at some of the plays with the players, they didn't follow their technique. I'm sitting here, I always call them chess games. If you are chest-to-chest with an offensive lineman, you've lost. You've got to be the low man so you can get up underneath the pads and control them and get rid of them. You can't do that. You can't. Your, your arms, you don't have the leverage. If you are up here high, you don't have the leverage, the drive, or anything to be able to make that move. And when you're up here like this, it's easy to get pushed backwards. They have got to get back to the fundamentals on the defensive line of being low and getting into the offensive lineman's body, grabbing hold of it, and getting rid of them. And I hope that uh, Jeff, the, the, the defensive line coach, has gotten into their ass, excuse pause, put a foot in their ass about the fundamentals of playing football and defensive line. You must, you must use your leverage. This is where math comes in. You have to understand the low man wins when it comes to fighting in the trenches. And they just were not the low men. They just looked like they just showed up and were playing and it was just bad. And that was the result that we got. Now, here's the funny thing. As bad as we were last week, at stopping the run. I want to say the commanders are giving up 4.6 yards um, on the ground per play, which is not good. I think we're giving up 4.8 on the ground. Um, the Giants are giving up like five something, and I think the Eagles are giving up like six. So it's kind of crazy when you think about it that the Eagles have had even worse problems than we had after 
that terrible game that we had. So that's where we are with our team and what we're doing thus, thus, thus getting ready for this game. Hopefully the Cowboys find a way to get a win, get some good feelings, and then we got Thursday night game. So this is not much time to get your shit together. Uh, hopefully Jake Ferguson really is ready to play, and he's not going to make this a lingering issue going forward. So we'll finish this off with three big questions from ESPN. You know how much I love ESPN. Question. Kmart, let's start with you, and let's go to Monday night. Did the Eagles' late-season issues carry over from last year to this year? Yeah, Greeny, how can you say they haven't? They're 2-7 and seven in their last nine games. We talk about the pass rush not Two being there. Seven. We talk about blown leads, or we talk about lopsided scores that they're unfortunately on the opposite end of. This is a team that is too talented to be, I don't want to say bad, but this inconsistent. Yeah, well, inconsistent and, or bad. I mean, the reality is they've been bad. There's they, no two ways to put it. The end of the game was absolutely bad. Yeah. Like, giving yeah. away the game like that is ugly. But you're right. They're an incredibly talented team that we thought would figure it out. And we thought that the coordinators would address a lot of their issues, but they're still having some of the same struggles. Just look at the bottom of the screen, Jeff. They've lost seven of their last nine games. <laughs> it, I it, love it. It's not been good, but this would, all be, this would all be solved if our best player, in addition, catches a ball. So yeah. let's not overreact to make a catch, and this is – this is all yeah. there were symptoms. I mean, I mean, it's, I think that's what we were kind of looking at is when the game is on the line, all the little add ups that we've all talked about at nauseum, but dating back to last year and even moments this year, they shine in those last three minutes of the game. We will dive deeply into this mm. a little bit later because we're going to find out a lot about them by how they respond mm. to what happened. But let's go back to the three big questions. That was number one. Hawk, here's number two. Looking at their schedule. Are the Ravens going to start 0-5? Yeah, it's not looking pretty looking at the schedule, but they're too talented. I don't think that they start 0-5. I think with Lamar Jackson, obviously Derrick Henry in the backfield, Dave Flowers has played played well at times. They're still trying to figure out like what this team looks like with Derrick Henry this year. So, A, they're too talented. B, the scariest rushing attack in football with the Ravens is going up potentially what looked like the weakest rushing defense on any level in the country last week. So I think the Cowboys are actually an opportunity for the Ravens to get over that hump. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're right. They are too talented. I do resent the fact that you only named offensive players when you said they're I mean, talented. Matt Abike can ball, Hamilton can ball, Humphrey can ball, Let him know. Can ball. Rook Let him know. Can ball. I mean, Trent Simpson's an incredible athlete. Ball. They they are. They have talent on both sides of the ball, which is why you're right. right. They're certainly I'm, not going to. So Baltimore and offense aren't synonymous? Like, <laughs> no, that's, I mean, <laughs> the Baltimore, I, mean, I know. Ball, okay, that's the like, players. Yeah. They, they can Stop ball. <laughs> they, they can play. Play. Let's, let's, let's be honest about Baltimore. I, I talked about them. I thought they were going to take a step back. I, I, not for the reasons they did against the Raiders. They had 10-point lead going in the fourth quarter, 11 penalties. That's not a John yeah, Harbaugh-type yeah. coach team. They Self-inflicted wounds took this team out. They have to get better from that perspective. I think it's a get-right game with Dallas because they're, they're running defense. But make no mistake, they have to fix their own problems in-house. Okay, I get all that. 0-5 is just wild to me. They literally could be 3-2. You know, like yeah. if they could beat all of those teams. So yeah. I don't. So it's 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 two games. Well, they should have beat the team they played That's last. That's the point. They should have beaten the Raiders yeah. Yeah. and they could have beaten yeah. the Chiefs. Yep. They were a toe away from beating the Chiefs. They were. Uh, they had a ten point lead in the fourth quarter against the Raiders, and now this. All right, third big question. Oh, Jeff Saturday. <laughs> Did the Cowboys quiet off season, as it turned out, doom this roster and this team after all? Yeah, this, this is a Super Bowl or bust type season. You talked about what? Dak and can you take him to the Super Bowl. They don't have the players around him right now to take them there. That's, that's the problem. You're seeing a team get older and slower as, as they move forward. They, and they, they don't want to go outside and address it. In okay, I want to stop there for a second because he, he been older and slower. Um, I don't know that they're getting older and slower. Now, I have to say, super. It, it's funny. Every morning when I'm doing my video, I have a chipmunk that always comes and stops right here at the door. There he is right there. Um, it's like he's uh, saying hello. Um, it's chipmunks here. It's groundhogs at the Red Brick House. Um, I don't know that the Cowboys have gotten older. When you look at the Cowboys, the oldest players, Dak Prescott, but, you know, quarterbacks, you know, you got Aaron Rodgers is the oldest player in football at 40 and is only 31. Um, you got rid of Tyron Smith. Now, yes, Zeke is getting up there, but he's only 29. You got Zach Martin, that's a little bit older, and you got D-Law. But everybody else on your team is really, really young. 
I don't know where it is that you're getting older and slower. If anything, you look at our secondary where you've got guys like Deron Bland that'll be coming back in the next couple of weeks and stuff, or Carson, who's now a starter, or even Diggs is not very old. You look at Overshone, this is only his second season. So where is it that we are an old, slow team? Now, Back to the whole Super Bowl or bust, I, I don't see how this is actually Super Bowl or bust when you didn't do things to get to the Super Bowl. If you were the Eagles a couple of years ago going all in or San Francisco bringing in Hargrave and you know getting Christian McCaffrey, that's what Super Bowl or bust means. That means we're pushing all the chips in and getting there. The moves the Cowboys made have nothing to say this is now a Super Bowl team except in ESPN's mind. And this is where you can't honestly look at this and say bringing back Zeke Elliott makes the Cowboys a Super Bowl team. You can't go out there and say bringing in Jordan Phillips and um, you know some of the other players, Linvel Joseph, are Super Bowl-type moves. Yes, the Cowboys paid Dak Prescott because they had no choice. Yes, they played C.D. Lamb because if you don't have C.D. Lamb, you don't have any offensive weapons whatsoever. But I don't know how you could honestly say paying those two guys makes you now a Super Bowl or bust team. It's just not. And this is just the crap that you're getting. Sorry, Jeff. Jeff, you know, you're cool people and all that. But that's just a wrong statement. In free agency, for whatever reason, they thought what they had in-house was better. I think it's showing them their, their backfield is older. The, everything's going to be dependent on Dak and how skillful C.D. Lamb can be. That, that's, that's a bad formula in today's NFL. Before I bring everyone in on this, I just need you to hear this because I need you to explain it to me. Yesterday, Jerry Jones was talking about how badly his team played and how they feel after being blown out at home by the Saints, and this is what he said. If we've got any arbitrage around our neck, is that we've been a good, good uh, to very good team during the season over the last four or five years with Mike, and we haven't done well in the playoff. So let's trade uh, some challenges during the season for doing well in the playoff, if you want to look at it that way. This doesn't call for a, a, a change in the system. It doesn't call for a change in the player as much as it does uh, take what we've learned Sunday, but we can do this, and uh, uh, we can do it with the uh, personnel that we've got out there right now. I love that man. I love I love everything about the way he <laughs> says words. Um, but if I understand what he said at this, the beginning of that, which I think is the important part, so we've done well in the regular season. We haven't done well in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So the solution is let's get our behinds handed to us yeah. in the regular season. Mark. And that will <laughs> solve. Let's not make the playoffs. Our problem. <laughs> it, it's we can't. We can't stink in the playoffs if we're not no. in the playoffs <laughs> all together. All together. <laughs> ah, you know I mean? Well, that no, means because the, he's he, Jerry's grasping at straws here. Like the thing that he constantly hears about his team is how they are a wonderful regular season team. And then why do we kill them? Because they don't get it done when it counts. So n he's leaning on. Well, we're facing adversity now. Adversity makes everybody tougher, everybody better. Like, this could actually be a good thing. Do I buy it? Not really. Um, because <laughs> essentially, he, it, playing poorly or getting, uh, having losses in the regular season doesn't guarantee you a playoff spot. It only makes it nope. tougher. And yes. he, the opposite is that he's saying is it could be true, which is maybe their roster just isn't as good as he thought it was or hoped it would be. Because this, the, you talk about symptoms. Like, yeah. I was there week one when they played the Browns. The takeaway from that game was, to me, was not that the Cowboys looked great. It was the Browns did not play up to the level that we expected them to. So then you have week two happen. So to me, I'm not surprised that, that the Cowboys are scuffling a little bit because they didn't look like a great team in week one. This is not how it works normally. Like, normally the teams that, that are bad in the regular season are also bad later. <laughs> like, the teams that are good, like, it's, rare, it's rarely how it works. It's not a good strategy. Listen, I mean, in their last two home games, 
You know, the funniest stat in the world was that they brought a 16-game home winning streak into this game this past Sunday because those are regular season streaks. The reality is the last two games in which they have played at home, they have allowed 92 points. They just gave more money to players who already were playing as well as they could possibly pay play, which is uh, Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb. What reason is there to think they're going to get better? Thank That's you. A perfect example is you wanted them to go get Derrick Henry last year. Correct. They didn't. What did they do instead? Right. They go back to 2018, get some two <laughs> great backs back in the day, right? And, and think that the 17-game season is going to be kind to them as we progress along. They spent the least amount in free agency outside of their own players. This is not the formula to give it. There's no addition. And I, I look at their offensive line. I get they have a young left there. But – that their offensive line is getting older, their backs are getting older, and you're putting more on Dak defensively. The inside, the interior portion of their defense, from the front defensive line all the way to back, is going to give you problems throughout the season. So I, the best argument I could make for Jerry potentially making some sense is like this is a wake-up call situation that gets your attention. But the problem is. We already knew what the issues were. Sometimes it's good to be exposed to what your problems are so you can then address them. We knew what your problems were last year, mm -hmm. and you didn't address them. And now we're seeing them unaddressed again, and that, to me, speaks to leadership. Maybe they thought they addressed them with, by bringing Mike Zimmer in yeah. to run mm -hmm. that defense. Mike Zimmer ain't, I, ain't had a tackle in a long time. I was going to say, unfortunately, Mike Zimmer doesn't have the uh, lateral quickness <laughs> the strength yeah. to play defensive tackle because that's honestly what they needed. They've needed it For since sure. last year. They needed it going into this year. And, and the simulated pressures, which Mike Zimmer is known for, the disguises and coverage pre-snap, does not matter if a team can run it down your throat, right? Because right? then it also makes your offense one-dimensional, like we pointed out. Like, the offense wasn't doing bad in the first half of that game, but then it got so out of hand, they had to start tossing it around the yeah. yard. And six just drives, sense. six touchdowns. You, you're not going to win too many That's games. bad on any level. Oh, Pop yeah. Warner, high school, Division three. that's really bad defense, and, and you can't Thank you for offense mentioning your way out of that. Three. Thank Shout you out to Division three. yeah. So right. this next week one, because standing in the Cowboys locker room after the game, Guys like Micah Hyde and Demarcus Lawrence were talking about how Mike Zimmer got in everybody's head. Like that was, they were praised for that performance. Mike Zimmer was praised like, oh, now the Cowboys, look at how they, they play. They, a physical Browns team, they were able to, to beat them. They were able to keep Deshaun Watson, you know, off his mark. You know, All right, this enough, is enough. Enough is enough. Okay, here's the thing. It's football. Everybody has bad games. Let's see how the Cowboys respond. One thing about Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys is they, I, I want to say it's 28 in like five or 28 and two after a loss. The Cowboys don't usually stack up lots of losses together. So let's hopefully this will end up being the Cowboys get a victory and we can just put this game with New Orleans to bed. Tough week in the NFC East, to, to be honest with you, it's quite possible that the NFC East could go 0-4 this weekend. I hope it kind of goes 1-3 with the Cowboys being the only win, but that's just me. As always, I appreciate you all. Thank you all for subscribing to the channel and being part of it. Uh, we're doing work and stuff on all different levels here we've got uh, my day job i'm actually back here doing some work in the workshop which is great to get back into the swing of things there uh, we're going to be doing some more tips on our new channel for um, helping you to grow your youtube channel and of course we'll be cooking crab cake subs we're going to make a giant crab cake oh my god sub for tomorrow and i hope you guys will check those out definitely if you like the subs that we're making um, on our channel and stuff Definitely go through and check out 